the Underground Railroad, follows the journey of a young woman named Cora and her pursuit of liberty and freedom. Cora is a young enslaved woman on a plantation who at a very young age was abandoned by her mother. She's then othered and ostracized within her own community. She hardly speaks. Everything that she processes, she does internally until Caesar comes up to her and says, let's go, let, let's leave this life um, because all we have here is pain and suffering. Caesar is a character who, he was born in Virginia. Um, he was promised manumission. That manumission didn't come to fruition. Um, he meets Cora on a plantation in Georgia and together they escape the plantation in the pursuit of, uh, of freedom and liberty. There is nothing here but suffering. Pain and suffering. It is time to go. With the role, I read the book after having met Barry and I felt that as an African outside of America, I was learning something that which the, you know, the, the white supremacist gaze had not allowed me to see prior to reading this book. And so it's a story about Africans in America and not just African Americans. So it's not as far removed as we would like it to be. And I really wanted to tell that story. There's anger in you. It'll fuel you, yes. What's the worst kind of fuel? One of the things I love about Barry's films, uh, particularly Moonlight and Beale Street Can Talk, is that those films are about complicated upbringings and about um, difficult lives. And, and there's a lot of violence that sort of underpins those movies. And yet in those stories, what Barry was seeking out was love. And that despite the environments or the obstacles in these characters' lives in his films, they were moving towards hopefulness and moving towards love. And well, I always wanted to work with Barry Jenkins. I mean, I didn't think that I would ever get the chance to just because he's such a brilliant guy. And, you know, it's just like, that's one of those dream scenarios. And once I got this part, like reading the book, I just couldn't believe my, the opportunity that I was given to be a part of something that I thought would be provocative and useful in pushing the conversation forward on race in this country. and you know, in general. Barry is, for me, the epitome of a leader. And, you know, he ensured that we had such a safe and supportive environment at all times. And he handled the whole project and everyone involved with such a sensitivity and care. He ensured we had a guidance counselor on set at all times. And irrespective of whether you utilize that service or not, it's important to just know that that is there, you know, if and when you need it. You know, if you find yourself in a, uh, you know, a, a particularly dark place or feeling overwhelmed, it's good to know that there is someone who can assist you out of that. Savagery man is capable of when he believes his cause to be just. I want people, number one, when they watch this, to feel seen and heard that your, your experiences are very valid, your frustrations are very valid. So I want people both black and non-black outside of the black community to go, oh, this actually happened. How do we empathize? How do we make it better from here? What are the ways in which we can sort of have those tough conversations with ourselves to sort of, you know, either A, push the, the dialogue in this country on race forward, but also just like, you know, in general, what are the ways in which we ex accept certain injustices um, because that's just the way it is. I think as a global community and as the human race, I think we have a long way to go in regards to unity, empathy, and um, understanding. What I hope is that this series will contribute to that conversation and uh, give audiences the opportunity to reflect on what they can do that is conducive to progress.